Well, I'm actually really pleased with how it's come out. I think after all of that, it's been worth all the effort. Welcome back to the home lab and today I'm going to do an experiment that you can try at home. We're going to have a go at the so-called Japanese foil ball challenge. So I'm sure there's something you've always done when you open uh, some chocolate and it's wrapped in tin foil and apart from eating the chocolate, which I'll leave for a minute, um, you get left with this lovely tin foil and you find yourself sort of bunching it up like this and turning it into a little ball. Well the Japanese foil ball challenge is a similar sort of thing, but it takes things to a whole new level by using a huge amount of aluminium foil. I don't know quite where this um, idea comes from. Um, I had a bit of a look around and I noticed that about six years ago or so, I think it was a Japanese person who published a video on how to make one of these out of regular what we call tin foil, aluminium foil, and loads of other people took up the challenge. So I thought, it's about time I had a go. So let's go back to younger FJ two years ago when I started making this project. But just before we start making this, I just want to say a huge thank you again to all of you for watching and to PCB Way for constantly supporting me with the videos that I make. As you know, they do uh, printed circuit boards, 3D printing and CNC machining, but they've also got a shared projects uh, page on their website. Why not have a look at that? Because I'm sure you'll get some ideas for projects that you might like to try. So I saw this experiment elsewhere and I thought we've got to try this and see how easy it is to do. So to kick off, I needed to get some aluminium foil or some kitchen foil. So here's the package that came and I ordered 50 metres and I actually thought I'd ordered a 50 metre roll. Uh, but what I've done instead um, is in fact, I seem to have ordered some um, shorter lengths, but that, that doesn't matter because what I want to do is I want to see whether um, putting these together to make our ball is going to make any difference. I don't think it will. I don't think it needs to be a continuous length. So what I'm going to do now is explain to you what we need to do. So this video is probably not all going to be made today. It's going to be quite a lengthy process. I'm going to need to take the kitchen foil off the roll, scrumple it up and make a really large ball of sort of crumpled up aluminium. And then the fun starts of hammering it and making it denser and denser and denser and sort of squeezing the air out and getting the aluminium foil to be really close together. Then I need to keep hammering to make it as spherical as I can. And the final stage will be to polish the outside and make it into a shiny ball. So let's get started. So I've got my first little ball here and it's not very compressed so there's a lot of hammering that needs to be done after this and uh, I've snapped the tin foil but I don't throw the aluminium foil but I don't think that matters. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep cracking on like this. Um, I won't bother you with filming all of it but I'll give you some updates as I go along. So getting a little bit further, what I've decided to do is to kind of cover the ball with the aluminium foil and then crush it into place. And I think that will mean there's less air trapped in it. But anyway, it's an experiment. So um, let's just see how we get on. Good, so there we go for the end of the first uh, roll of foil, and that, I'm looking down, was uh, 13 metres. I think I'm going to put on uh, probably another two uh, rolls of aluminium foil, so that'll get us to uh, just under 40 metres, and uh, then we really will um, start hammering the thing as much as possible to try and get as much of the air out and get it as compressed and as dense as possible. 
So before I put any more aluminium foil on, that's our first roll, I think I'm going to uh, do a bit of hammering first to get this as compressed as possible. And I've got loads of hammers at home, uh, but I bought myself a nice panel beating hammer. So I think that'll work quite well um, if I do this on a hard surface. So let the hammering begin. So rather a lot of bashing later and a bit of a sore wrist in fact, I think I could get RSI um, by doing this. Uh, we've got a ball and that's from our first roll of uh, foil. It's um, a process that I'm beginning to learn a bit about. Um, it seems to like being hammered um, on a slightly softer surface to compress it and also on a harder surface. But if you hammer it on too hard a surface, um, cracking seems to form. And this cracking um, doesn't seem to relate to uh, where the foil was folded over. So I wonder if the foil is actually breaking. And I can see quite a bit of oxide on my fingers as well. Anyway, um, that's pretty dense now. It'd be quite interesting to actually measure the density. I might try and do that to see how close I am to that of aluminium or whether there's still quite a bit of air in here. But what I need to do now is take another reel of aluminium foil out and do some more wrapping and hammering. So I couldn't resist the temptation to make a few measurements there as a physicist and a quick calculation and I found out uh, that the density is actually 0.61 grams per centimetre cubed, uh, which doesn't compare very well with the density of aluminium in a solid block, which would be 2.7 grams per centimetre cubed. So 2.70 uh, divided by 0.61 yeah, about four and a half times um, less dense than aluminium should be. Anyway, um, I don't think that matters. Uh, we'll keep adding some more aluminium foil and we'll keep hammering and make this ball a bit bigger and see how we get on then when we get to the stage where we then need to polish it. OK, so let's add some more tin foil and what we're going to have to do is continue the process of wrapping it up and making it into a ball. And as I think I said earlier, I'm going to use uh, three reels of this. So uh, we've got a really large ball. OK, so that's reel number two done. So it's back off to the garden to do a bit more hammering. So back from another session in the garden and I didn't bore you with uh, filming that, but um, it's come out quite nicely now. So that's the ball with uh, two reels of aluminium foil on. Um, so I think that's about 26 metres or so. And um, whilst its density is a bit low, it, it's feeling quite solid. So that's great. So uh, what I'm going to do now is get the third reel out and begin to uh, put that over the ball. And then, to be honest with you, I think I need a bit of a break from this. OK, so that's the third and thankfully final reel done. Uh, what I took to doing um, a little bit earlier on off camera was actually uh, going down onto the wooden floor and rolling a bit of uh, aluminium foil onto the ball and then crushing it in and then rolling a bit more on. Anyway, um, that's three rolls done. So I guess uh, now it's a lot more hammering and then maybe a bit of polishing. I needed to compress the ball a little bit further and I didn't have an anvil 
but I remember there was a 12 kilogram thick steel plate at work. So I borrowed that from them and bashed away, had to put ear defenders on. And I guess the neighbours felt they probably needed them as well. Does the board have chocolate in it? After quite a bit more hammering, um, I frequently measured the diameter of the ball and found that it wasn't getting much smaller. So I felt it was about time to start the polishing. And I used sandpaper, but I found cupping the sandpaper in my hand with a cloth worked really well because it created a sort of round surface which helped keep the ball in its spherical shape. After a little bit of sanding, uh, the surface of the ball looked a bit like the cratered surface of the moon, but it did make it easy for me to see where I needed to do a bit more sanding. So I used um, 180 grit wet and dry paper followed by 400 grit paper, which um, I bought a few years back from Wilco, a company some of you might uh, well remember and rather a sad loss from the high street. And then there was more and more and more sanding sitting in the garden doing it from time to time. But as time went on, I felt I really could see the difference I was making. However, the mirrored finish really seemed a very long way away. So I got to the point where I was getting a bit tired of all of this sanding. And I felt that the further sanding was actually kind of opening up little uh, defects in the ball. So I decided that that was the time to stop. Having done enough of this fine uh, 400 grit sanding, I felt it was time to get things closer to the final mirrored finish stage. And I had a couple of tins of Brasso hanging around in the house, so I gave those a go. And actually it worked really well. It created quite a good uh, surface finish, and this time without too much effort. Finally, I used some Jewelers Rouge on a soft polishing wheel attached to my fantastic little uh, Proxon drill. Uh, it's a bit like a Dremel, if you know what that is. And with a bit of uh, effort, this brought the ball close to a really good mirror shine. And it was great to see it becoming more and more mirrored. And in the sunlight, I could begin to see more and more of my reflection in it. So with this final stage completed, I felt it really was time to call it a day and marvel over the artifact that I'd made. Even though it had taken two years to get finished, I feel it was well worth it for the end result that I'd finally achieved. So some final thoughts. Well, in hindsight, I think um, I was rushing to the polishing stage because I really wanted it finished and I wanted to see what it would look like. I think I should have spent just a little bit more time sanding out the lumps that make it look a bit like a potato. But my partner was very kind. She said it doesn't look like a potato at all. It looks really good and spherical. But I think if I'd done that first and then polished after, I think the ball would have been more spherical than it is, but it doesn't really matter. The other thing I would have done is probably used uh, even more aluminium foil to make it much bigger. I don't think that would have been a great deal of extra work. But when it comes down to it, I'm pretty pleased with the result that I managed to get in the end. So now it's finished, I thought I'd do one final density check. And I know I'd done a density check before sanding it down. And the astute among you will realise that if I sand it down and remove material, um, I lose mass and I also lose uh, volume. So it shouldn't make any difference to the density. But I do actually want to check anyway, because if it's not totally spherical, then I could be measuring a diameter that was a little bit too small or a little bit too large. So in fact, that would affect the calculated density. So I'll do a quick measurement of the diameter and then we'll do a quick four thirds pi r cubed and we'll work out what the final density is and compare it to that of a solid piece of aluminium. So with a final diameter of 63 millimetres, and I have to remember to change that to a radius, and a mass of 228 grams, it gives a final density of about 1.8 grams per centimetre cubed, which is about 65% of that of solid aluminium, which has a density of about 2.7 grams per centimetre cubed. So not bad for a first attempt, I guess. So this thing has taken me about two years to make. Um, I sort of started it and then put it down and then came back to it and put it down and did other things. And I've got a bit of a feeling that part of it was due to the fact I thought it was never really going to work out as being very good at all. Uh, but I've had a real bash on it in the past week or so, and I'm really pleased with the end result. 
Um, so um, it's a really good example of things you see on YouTube and videos people make and they make things look so easy and you just don't realise how much work goes into what they actually do. Anyway, I've been really pleased with this. Why don't you give it a go yourselves and put in the comments below how you got on because I'd be really interested to see um, how the aluminium foil balls that you've made have worked out and perhaps how long it took you to do. But all in all, I think it was a project well worth trying. So uh, thanks for joining me again and I hope you enjoyed that little project. Um, I'm sort of thinking maybe I should make a Japanese Dorodango at some stage, but I'm not sure how much physics is in that. Anyway, um, do stay to the end of the video because after I finish speaking, I usually add a few extra bits and bits that I didn't cut into the video. And at, right at the end, I put in some links to other videos of mine that you might be interested in. Anyway, thanks again for joining me and I shall be making another video very soon.